Hello, and welcome to the Demoet series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. Demoets are brief instructional videos that demonstrate specific features of TDV. In this Demoet, we discuss procedure joins. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining procedure joins and outlining their importance for our customers. Next, we walk through a very basic demo of procedure joins. Finally, we summarize the contents of this demoet. Let's begin by discussing what procedure joins are and why they are important for our customers. As we shall see in the demo, procedure join syntax is not always required when joining data from procedures and views. Instead, Procedure join syntax is used when a special type of behavior is needed in a join between a view on the left side of the join and a procedure on the right side. Specifically, the procedure join syntax will enable execution of the procedure multiple times using input parameters taken from each row in the left side view. The procedure will not be executed for a row that provides input parameter values that have already been executed by a previous row. Otherwise, the procedure is executed once per left side row. Parameters for the procedure may be taken from one or more fields in the row. Note that the actual join occurs after all executions of the procedure. Results from all procedure executions are aggregated before the join occurs. This is an efficient approach because it lets TDV skip procedure execution for rows that provide already used parameter values. Procedure joins are important to our customers for several reasons. They enable view data to be augmented in many ways. For example, a procedure might perform complex calculations on row-by-row -row data, or execute arbitrary procedural logic, or add data that is accessed in a non-standard manner. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo of procedure joins. Here is the business problem that we illustrate in this demo. We start with a virtual view in TDV. We want to augment this view with data returned from a stored procedure. However, we need the stored procedure to calculate different responses on a row-by-row -row basis using parameter information from each row. We want to publish the augmented data as a simple view that can be consumed by a business analyst. You can easily build the artifacts used in this demo from scratch. However, users can install the CAR file available in the Demoet repository. We are ready to begin our demo. First, let's take a look at the three stored procedures we'll be using. The first is called GetOrderTime. It accepts one input parameter, an order ID. Order ID is simply echoed back as a scalar output. In addition, a time value is returned as a second scalar. Next, we'll be using the lookup product procedure from the examples folder that is shipped with TDV. It accepts a product ID as an input parameter and returns a cursor output. However, since the procedure looks for an equal condition on a unique key, it will never return more than one row. Finally, we have a procedure called Get Multiple Products, which makes a small modification to the Lookup Product feature. Like Lookup Product, it accepts a product ID as an input parameter and returns a cursor output. However, we have changed the WHERE clause so that the output cursor will contain multiple rows. Before we look at procedure joins, let's examine two use cases that do not require the procedure join syntax. In this example, we create a view that joins data from an orders view and our get multiple products procedure using an equals condition. 
We can accomplish this as an ordinary inner join because we can hard code the input parameter to the procedure and it will return data for all product IDs of one or greater. The two cursors will be joined on the equals condition row by row. We don't need to specify parameter values on a row by row basis. Here is a second use case that does not require the procedure join syntax. We join the orders view with the time scaler that is output from our get order time procedure. In this use case, we want to have the same time value appear in every row of the final result. Therefore, we can simply hard code an input parameter and execute the procedure once. Again, we do not need row by row parameter values. Now let's look at use cases that do use procedure join syntax. Here is the SQL for a view that joins order data with a time value returned from our scalar procedure. Imagine that the time returned by the procedure is the exact time the order was placed. To specify a procedure join, we add the word procedure before the word join. Instead of hard coding the procedure's input parameter, we specify a column from the orders view. The input parameter will now change for each row in the orders view. When we execute the view, we see that the stored procedure is indeed executing multiple times because our time value changes throughout the result set. If we execute and show statistics in TDV Studio, we see that the procedure was executed 35 times. However, the view returns 50 rows, so our procedure was not executed for every row in the view. Remember that procedure join only executes the procedure once per unique set of input parameter values. Sure enough, our result shows that when order ID is non-unique, the time values returned by the procedure are identical indicating that the results from the first execution were used in the joins to subsequent rows for the same order ID. Next, let's try a procedure join using the lookup product procedure from the TDV examples folder. This procedure returns a single row cursor, and we can see that the procedure join lets us work with cursor responses just as easily as we worked with scalars. Again, we see that procedure execution was only required 25 times, even though 50 unique rows were ultimately returned. This is because the view on the left side of the join only contains 25 unique values that are used as input parameter for the procedure. Finally, let's try a procedure join that uses our get multiple products stored procedure, which returns a multi-row cursor. As expected, execute and show statistics shows the efficiency of the procedure join. The procedure was invoked 25 times, even though there were 50 rows on the left side of the join. Those 25 executions produced an aggregate result of 325 rows, which was sufficient to satisfy the join for a final result of 646 rows. After looking at use cases that do not require the procedure join syntax, we have examined procedure joins using scalars, single row cursors, and multi row cursors. Our demo is complete. Let's summarize what we have seen in this presentation. As we have seen, procedure join syntax is not always required when joining data from procedures and views. Instead, Procedure join syntax is used when a special type of behavior is needed in a join between a view on the left side of the join and a procedure on the right side. Specifically, the procedure join syntax will enable execution of the procedure multiple times using input parameters taken from each row in the left side view. The procedure will not be executed for a row that provides input parameter values that have already been executed by a previous row. Otherwise, the procedure is executed once per left side row. 
parameters for the procedure may be taken from one or more fields in the row. Note that the actual join occurs after all executions of the procedure. Results from all procedure executions are aggregated before the join occurs. This is an efficient approach because it lets TDV skip procedure execution for rows that provide already used parameter values. Procedure joins are important to our customers for several reasons. They enable view data to be augmented in many ways. For example, a procedure might perform complex calculations on row-by-row -row data, or execute arbitrary procedural logic, or add data that is accessed in a non-standard manner. Thank you.